What's up? This is ENT on chords. This is my very first tutorial ever. Um, I'm going to do a collection of tutorials on the different system.security uh, classes or just the system.security in general um, for the .NET framework uh, within your program and uh, within the uh, 2.0 framework and how to interact and do stuff with the framework with your programming, etc. I'm sure you get my drift. Probably said too much there. But uh, in order to do this, you're going to need to get Microsoft Visual Studio C Sharp Express, and I expect you to know how to code. So, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make an MD5 hash. Now, a hash is just a fingerprint print of a piece of data. And uh, the reason hashes exist are because um, you want to make sure data is hasn't been changed, hasn't been messed with. So basically, um, you take text in an email, you hash it, you send the hash along with your email, and they hash that uh, data that you sent in your email and compare their hash to your hash, and they better match. Otherwise, um, it's been manip uh, intersected, and the data has been manipulated with, tampered with, I guess I should say. It's not even a word. And, um, you know, MD5 collision, um, there's many different types of forms of attack that they can do on an MD5 hash even. So, uh, digital signatures are encrypting hashes and creating a public-private key pair, and only you have the private key. There's no, uh, you don't have to trust anyone. That's a good way to put it. But um, for now, I'm just going to show you how to ha uh, make a hash, and we're just going to do a string for demonstration purposes. So create a new project called hash. Wait for it to load up. Let me go ahead and grab a toolbox here real quick. I'm going to go ahead and drag a couple things over. Um, got a button and a toolbox. This is loading kind of slow. Now I'm not going to worry about renaming these or doing anything. I just want to get right into business. So um, I'm going to go ahead and close the properties box and go full screen here. Go all out. <coughs> now the very first thing you're going to want to do is uh, include the system.security library within your uh, .NET application. Um, this is actually a scary thing because uh, by default the system.security is not included. Um, in the code, whenever you open up a new application, you never see using system.security up here. And a lot of people don't use it in their code. And, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, bugs and hacks and stuff of that nature as um, far as uh, the .NET framework because people don't uh, implement stuff programmatically within their code and uh, use correct security settings. Um, also, I mean, uh, without it, um, it's vulnerable to an alluring attack no matter what you do. Um, there's no way to, for the program to check the assembly to see if any of the data within the assembly has been changed or code has been injected. So you could just inject code in it like it was no big deal. You could even import a DLL and pass parameters to that DLL from C Sharp and do things like buffer overflows or anything that's on bug track that has something. Uh, that lists a DLL that has something wrong with it. You could find out the parameters and the method uh, signature, and you know, go from there. You can pass, and which I'm going to show you how to do that. So, um, without it, just to show you that it is important. But um, so let's start off. I'm going to stop jabbering here, and we're going to start getting down to business uh, using System Dot Security. Now, within the security, there's uh, We got authentication, cryptography, permissions, uh, policies, and principles. Um, I'm going to go and I'm going to show you how to do permissions in my tutorial. Cryptography, um, principles, and policies. Yeah, and then I'm going to go and also authentication, of course. Um, that's a fun one, actually. 
and then I'm going to show you how to uh, actually sign your program. There's a program, a hidden program within the Visual Studio that makes it pretty e pretty easy. So I'll show you how to do that. But for now, I'm just gonna we're gonna go in the cryptography. Now the first thing we need to do is the next thing we need to do is uh, create a MD5 object. In this case, in the .NET, it's MD5 Crypto Service Provider, and we'll call it my MD5 equals new uh, MD5 Crypto Service Provider. Now, in order to do anything with this, uh, it all works. All its parameters uh, require bytes and binaries. Um, so we need to take the data from our text box on our form and uh, stored in a byte array. So I'm going to go bytes, uh, plain bytes equals, uh, let's see, I'm going to have to improvise on here, encoding dot, okay, and there's different kind of types of co encoding in here. You can just sc scroll through them. Uh, Unicode, if you're going to be turning crazy characters in the bytes, etc. Um, but I'm just going to do ASCII for demonstration, I guess. And get bytes, and I didn't rename the text box. So text box dot one dot text. Now the next thing we need to do is actually uh, make a fingerprint of the um, hash array, or the not the hash array, but the plain bytes. <coughs> we need to compute the hash. So my MD5 dot compute hash and like I said earlier it takes bytes for its parameters so there's our bytes and it's going to compute the hash on those bytes and there's a property within the uh, MD5 crypto service provider called hash and basically um, it uh, gets the hash bytes for you I guess there's an instance variable in this class here and whenever I pass this parameter, it uh, assigns the instance variable, and there's a property called hash that gets probably the hash. That's probably what it's called, the hash. So now in order to display the hash in a readable form, we're going to have to put it into a byte array. And uh, let's see, bytes, hash bytes equals myMD5.hash. We're just calling that property and getting the hash. Hopefully, hopefully you guys are comfortable with this. I'm not going to go over properties and um, basic stuff in my tutorials. It won't be any of it. So, all right, now let's uh, display the hash bytes. Um, message box dot show. Now the parameters for a message box require a string, so we need to take the hash bytes and convert it to um, a string. So let me think of a way. Um, oh yeah, there's a way here. Con bit converter dot to string. Yeah, that'll take a byte array and turn it into a string. And uh, it takes a byte as a parameter. So a byte array or even a byte, I think. Hash bytes. Okay, let's go ahead and run our application. I'm going to go ahead and uh, type in some text here, I guess, hacker. Uh, and there's our MD5 um, hash. And see for yourself, but you can put in plain bytes in there and it'll be even, or it'll be different. It'll just be um, the hex of uh, the plain bytes. It'll be different. 